So, I'm going to talk about another kind of concept in arm wrestling. And that concept is that you want to be close to somebody to do the most damage to them. The few, you know, the way I look at arm wrestling, you know, I think about it all the time, and I try to relate it through all aspects of my life, you know? Like anything that I see on the table, I'm like, oh, that's just like in life. You know, like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, like for example, the top row, outside arm wrestling, okay? Make the person come to you. Make them chase you. It's just like in life, right? Like if you are, you know, trying to have a relationship with somebody and you want the power, you make them come to you, right? <laughs> we, play this, we play this little game. Like, uh, hey, Jerry, come here. Come here for a second. See that? He came to me. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Right? I have the power right there. Anyways, okay. So, um, so that's what you want, right? You want people to come to you, right? You want, you want people to come to you. That's outside, outside arm wrestling theory, okay? But where can you hurt the person the most is when you're intimately close to them. Right? If I try and harass some stranger that I don't know, okay, they can brush me off very easily. But the closer I can get to somebody, the more I can really damage them. Okay? And it's the same thing in arm wrestling. Okay? So what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay? The way I look at arm wrestling is it's like a hierarchy of technique. Okay? So like the most technically sound thing is, is the post. Okay? The post, okay, there's no real counter to it. There really isn't, okay? And that's why I always say that uh, that is what determines all arm wrestling technique, all arm wrestling flow, is whoever has the stronger post can kind of determine, at least technically, the flow of the match. They might not win. It has nothing to do with winning or losing. But if they have a stronger post, they at least get to dictate what happens in the match. The other person's adjusting to that. Um, so, but that doesn't mean stick with the post. That means you drop down and get intimately close to them. Because the way you can do the most damage is by being as close to them as possible. All right? It's almost like a hill, okay? With the post being on the top, okay? This is outside technique, okay? So it'd be like, you know, so post, you could have like the highest top roll you could imagine. You do a low hand top roll, you know, and somewhere it just trickled down to where at the end you were doing some full commitment king's move arm wrestling thing, okay? Inside, ar inside arm wrestling, you'd have like a really high hook, like some real high up thing, you know, where you'd switch to like a dragging style hook to where you were like pressing to at the bottom, like at the full like outside region of arm wrestling is you'd have like a flop wrist press. And I'm not trying to devalue any of these techniques, okay? I'm just trying to tell you where I think they fit in and where to that arm wrestling pyramid. So, what I mean by being intimately close to somebody is, so I start off my game, okay, at, at posting, okay? Trying to make the person come to me, right? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> right? So, uh, so, that's where I'm starting off my game, right? But then the guy realizes, okay, he, he says, all right, he's got too much hand for me, okay? If I stay up there with him, he's just going to beat me. I don't want to fight a losing battle, right? So he starts to switch his technique, okay? He starts to make adjustments, okay? And he's like, okay, I'm not going to be up there with him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press him, okay? I'm going to come in, and I'm going to press him right off the bat. Because a press is a fabulous counter to a post, okay? Fabulous counter. If I'm, like, all up here... And, and he decides he's going to just drill me into a, into a press. If I stay thinking I'm just going to drive through him with my bicep, I'm gonna, it's going to look something like, boom, you know? It's, I'm going to get flattened, right? So I have to become close to him. I have to use my technical superiority and drop my technique. So I'm just above him, okay? Now I can choose. I have choices, right? But the main, the main choice you're going to do, like the first one, is just about uh, uh, angle, okay? Remember how I said... That the post, this high up angle, is what everything flows off of. All right. And the reason why, uh, I'll have Rory this time, okay? The reason why is it's, it's this whole ridge, okay? This whole ridge, this whole finger line. There's two, like, kind of rising ridges that, uh, you know, talk about technique, okay? This one, this line, and this line, okay? 
And, and this one is, is, I'd say, almost more important once the person decides to hold on to you. Okay? It's very, very important. Okay? And, it's, and, and what happens is you're switching from a high hand top, top roll to a low hand top roll. Okay? And this is like the pivot point. Okay? Rising. Okay? All this, this is all rising strength. Okay? And then the guy can switch and be like, no, I'm going to cut, right? And then he's going to come inside to his hand, right? Okay? And at the beginning, when we come up and we're deciding who the boss is, it's so much to do with these two ridges, okay? Right? When we're coming up, we're like, okay, all right, I want you to hold on to me, okay? I know you probably never would, but I want him to, I want him to hold on to me a bit. So say he falls for it, okay? All right? Go ahead and set up for a press, right? There. Good. Okay? All right? And say I haven't changed my game and I'm still all up high, Okay? And, and really, I'm in the wrong spot. I'm in the wrong spot. I really need to sw switch to a lower hand style, okay? To become intimately close to him, where the pressure is, okay? I don't want him to get underneath me somehow. I want to drop down to his level. If he decides to come back up, I can very quickly elevate my game once again and ma just maintain that just slight hi uh, height advantage over him. Um, about the, about more, more about that, okay? That rising ridge, okay? You see when our hands come together, okay? All right, fair grip, fair grip, all right? Real fair grip, even, okay? Now just open up again, okay? You see where this ridge intersects his hand, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a fair grip, okay? Now, nobody, nobody wants fair grip, right? Does anybody here want a fair grip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody wants that, that's garbage. Okay, so, you're always trying to increase your leverage, right? So at the beginning, it's all about the top, right? It's all about making him hold on to you, get the top of your hand elevated, get these regrips with your fingers, right? Always be walking up, get your finger as high up as you can in their hand, okay? Obviously not covering their knuckle because that's cheating. Um, but you know, you're going that way, right? You're always trying to climb your fingers, okay? Until they, they start to actually hold on to you, right? Until they make that drop in technique, okay? That adjustment, okay? And that's where you have to drop your technique, okay? And one of the way you do it is switching from a high angle to a lower angle, okay? And people talk about it called low hand top roll. People have probably heard about this. Okay, now the low hand top roll is really just a balancing act, okay? Low hand top roll balancing act is again, you know how we talked about uh, at the beginning, um, with uh, the defensive hook, you know, you can give it away hard, okay, or you can kind of float it in, okay? All right, same thing with the low hand top roll, okay? All right, I can give it away hard, okay, or I can kind of float it in depending on what he's doing, okay? All right, the floating method always is gonna require a little bit more technique and a little bit more experience, okay? Going hard, okay, uh, can, can simplify things. Now, um, it's about, the intersection, right? It's about where this ridge intersects his hand now, okay? If I'm arm wrestling like this, okay, like I said, fair grip, okay? But when I'm pronating, when I'm trying to bend his wrist back, when I'm doing an outside technique trying to get into his fingers, okay, wrist bending back, okay, the best thing I can do, open up your hand, is have this, this, um, you know, uh, the best way to describe it, uh, you know, interaction point, right? Because this is interacting heavily with his wrist. My pronation is interacting very heavily with his wrist when I'm rolling and he's cupping, okay? The best thing I can do is have it higher up, right? If I could arm wrestle him like this, it would be fantastic, <laughs> right? This would, this would be exactly what I would want every time, okay? But obviously that's not gonna be always attainable. But what is gonna be attainable is to elevate it slightly, okay? In some capacity, okay? Now the reason you do a lower hand is because as soon as he starts to do an inside game, right, he's focusing on getting his cup in, right? And, and the process of getting his cup in generally, okay, is a soft counter, okay? He generally is not fighting with all the fundamentals of arm wrestling. He's switching, he's giving up his rotation. That means, that means I'm not feeling it all up here anymore. It's gonna start to come down. Okay, so I need to raise with a higher priority the bottom of my hand. Okay, and that's when I talk about the dropping of technique. Okay, because 
you know, a higher technique is all about raising the top of your hand, okay? But as he changes his game, I need to stay with him intimately so I can do the most damage, okay? Mm -hmm. So I need, to, I need to raise the bottom of my hand. People talk about a low hand top roll, and I see a lot of people say, oh yeah, when I do a low hand top roll, I lower my hand. Well, that's exactly the opposite thing of what you want to do. You've fought hard to get the top of your hand high, okay? What I want to do is I want to raise the bottom of my hand and keep what I have up top. Now I want to raise that other part because I just want to eventually be arm wrestling him by his, by his fingertips. This is where I'm going, right? So when we're pulling, okay, if he's decided he's going to press, okay, right, right away I'm getting the bottom of my hand up, okay, right? You see that? How I'm really trying to put the pressure on his pinky, okay? And that's why the post is kind of an imaginary strength because it never really is about your post. It's about what the post gets you, right? It controls the technique, okay, and it makes the person have to adjust. And from that adjustment is where it really pays dividends. So when you are in control of a match, instead of just always thinking about kickback, also think about dropping your hand, okay? And getting, it's not dropping your hand, sorry, elevating the base of your hand.